Hi guys, uh, this is uh, Andreas, uh, Sonic Painliner. I'm doing a now spinning uh, video. Uh, I haven't done one of those in a while, and as I said last time, uh, I did one well, or at least in the beginning of that, that series of videos. I have enough records now that I can actually pick stuff off the shelves and make a potentially interesting video about things that I've been listening to. Um, I haven't done one of those in a while, obviously I've been listening to a lot of music. Um, I have li been listening to the new things that I bought, but I've also been picking up stuff from the shelves. So, you know, this is an opportunity to show the older stuff and just revisiting things, and it's always always good to do that. So, yeah, one of the things that I've been playing and I'm playing right now is Earth Pentastar and the Star of Demons. Uh, came out in 1996. I think that makes it the second album? Unsure. Completely unsure. Completely unsure. Anyway, Earth Vindicated, obviously, at the time they were like disregarded, nobody was paying attention, it was like, what the hell are you playing? Being on Sub Pop did not help at all, I think. But yeah, this is an amazing, amazing stoner rock record, and you know, it's highly, highly recommended. Do check it out. You probably already have it, and you know, the people that are watching this channel just most probably will have it. Anyway, what I was playing actually this morning was uh, Brian jo Jonestown Massacre, Method Drone, this is their first album, and just fantastic psychedelia, there's not a lot to say about this. Their early alb albums are really good, their latest albums are really good as well. I don't. I think that I, you know, I need to expand my Brian Jonestown's uh, Brian Jonestown Massacre collection. Um, yeah, because it's just really good. And do check out their latest albums. I haven't, I have only streamed them, and they're really good. Really, really good. Uh, yeah, Metal Drone. Brian Jonestown Massacre makes me smile. That's all I have to say. When I listen to their music, I'm just, I'm just happy. True. Uh, an album that, uh, uh, yeah, I've posted on um, Facebook. And um, I know that uh, Chris Alvear, well, he doesn't hate it, he just thinks that it's not as good. Golden Void, it came out in 2012. Uh, it's uh, members of Earthless. And um, yeah, I, I got it when, at the time that it came out. I've listened to it and I was like, meh, it's alright. And then I picked it out of the shelves like you know, a few months ago, actually. And it's staying on the now uh, spinning kind of row of records here in in um, the living room because my girlfriend li liked it and I liked it as well I was like oh wow this is really good why didn't I pick it up it didn't just pick up the vibe when I was first playing it and I actually posted that on Facebook and um, Brett uh, had the same reaction he was like oh yeah I remember buying this and you know I wasn't hugely impressed so I put it back in the shelves and then because I posted and said that thing that you know I had in the shelves and then I took it out listened to it again you know with fresh ears or something like that and I really liked it uh, he did the same and he was like yeah this is really good so yeah don't don't just you know disregard some of some albums just because you know first time around it didn't Make sense or you weren't impressed this is a really good album really good album nudge and a wink in my opinion to uh hawkwind especially the you know it's in the name um uh, warrior at the edge of time period era if you like of hawkwind that's my opinion everybody else is like no there's a definite black sabbath uh, sound to it i don't hear that I'm sorry i don't know i mean yeah, that's just me. I mean, you know, I, I might be wrong. I, I just cannot hear that. Probably I am. Playing was playing this morning. Gilla, uh, 1971, a classic crowd rock, psychedelic crowd rock. Just monster album, monster album. Uh, I don't know if they've released anything else. I don't remember. This is a reissue on Second Battle. It was a bit pricey, but yeah, if you see it. If you see an original, if you see a reissue, whatever, 
pick it up. It's really, really good. Highly, highly recommended. Really good stuff. Another issue from this band, Mirkwood, um, was out on Machu Picchu. You know Machu Picchu because they released this album, Dark, and also this one, which I don't remember the name. Um, Anonymous, yeah, Inside the Shadow. Uh, yeah. And this one as well, Mirkwood. It starts off with a heavy rock, kind of heavy hard rock 70s sound, and I was sort of disappointed, but then it goes on to become very, you know, more psychedelic, and I prefer that sound to the first um, uh, to the first album, first song. But yeah, when you drop the needle, you're like, uh, I'm not 100% convinced that, that that was a good purchase, but the rest of the album just makes up for it, so it's really good. Um, yes, Bob Dylan. I like Bob Dylan. Uh, I don't know if uh, I've mentioned this before, and I like Bob Dylan up until this album. Uh, this is a mono reissue, um, yeah, um, first ever reissue on mono edition of this landmark double album, blah, 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 Anyway, to me, Bob Dylan is up until here. I've tried to listen to his later stuff, just doesn't, doesn't work out uh, for me, anyway. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I've been to a gig some, like, six years, seven years ago, and um, there were selling, you know, merchandise outside the gig, and what struck me was that everything was for the Dylan period in, in the early 60s up until the motorcycle accident. So his image, his, his music, his, his big influence has been that period, uh, and it, it's no accident, I think. Um, yeah, it's to what he made at that time that was like significant. After that, it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Another interesting thing about it is that if you go to a, a Dylan con concert or if you have a live album or whatever, you'll notice that every single song he sings is very different to what was actually recorded on on record. And if you go to a, one of his gigs now you probably will not be able to recognize any of the songs, even if they're classics. Um, so, yeah, and I realized when I was listening to this album, like, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, that Dylan doesn't have a studio version and a live version. Whatever he does is like one take. So it's what's committed to tape and, you know, pressed on vinyl or CD or whatever is whatever was done at that point it's just it's it's like a one off it, there is no he he doesn't try to Im imitate what he did on the record because on the record he didn't try to produce something of you know had a vision of how it should sound so like you know i woke up this morning like you know whatever and I'm singing my song this way, tomorrow we'll sing it in a different way, in five minutes from now we'll sing it in a completely different way. And so I was thinking that, you know, Bob Dylan albums are sort of unique in that that sense, that, you know, it's, 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 it's a real record, it's a record of something happening in the studio, whereas everything else is like uh, produced and, you know, um, there's a lot of production in a way, you know, there's a lot of thought into how it should sound, whereas Dylan albums are like, you know, one take, go, done. So, yeah. Just, I don't know. It might be true, might not be true, but that's how I, I interpreted and how I found, you know, his sound to be, I mean, yeah. Miles Davis, uh, Dark Magus, uh, his electric period, and yeah. Some people say that the Garta is much better, whatnot. I always reach out to Dark Magus when I want to listen to Miles Davis. And yeah, it's just monster album. And all these live albums that came during that period are just monster albums. Highly, super highly recommended. Uh, you know, the, the, the people that are playing here are just... They made careers, you know, they, 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 they're... Yeah, no words, no words to describe. I mean, super highly recommended. Yeah.
won't say anymore. I mean, yeah. this is a now spinning video. I don't want to make a 30 minute video. Mobilization general, uh, protest, and spirit jazz, spiritual jazz, I guess that's what they wanted to say from France 1976. Does um, exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, it has things that I, I wasn't aware of. Um, the only thing that I do own is. Where is it? This one, Samba Miao, by the. Um, um, the Full Moon Ensemble. Oh yeah, and Baroque Jazz Trio, which I do have that as well. Yeah, I do have these two. But everything else I was pretty much new to me, and it's fantastic. It does what it says on the tin, and it's just highly, highly recommended if you want to check it out. Uh, Andrei Korzynski, um This is called uh, Secret Enigma, 1968-1981. Andrei Korzynski is a composer. He's done work for film, um, horror films, you know, just regular ones, easy listening, jazz, uh, you know, all that kind of spectrum of uh, music that you would expect from Italians, for example. He's done it, and he's really good, and it's highly recommended. I, Whatever comes out from this guy, I always pick it up. Just fantastic. Highly, highly recommended. At Drake Korzynski, uh, Finders Keepers have reissued quite a few things from him, from his catalog. Do check every single one of them. It's really good. This is this compiles a few of his 10 inches and um, some other things as well. So yeah, check this out. Really, really good. Um, do I need to say anything about this second album from the Stooges? Fun House. Yeah, just need to crank it up when you're listening. Maximum volume yields maximum results. Absolutely true for that album. It's just, yeah. Um, at the current suppression ring, I don't have a lot to say about this one. Really good, sort of garage, in the garage sort of sound. Uh, Big Star was showing, showed this like a few of his videos ago. Um, he has the red version, I got the blue version, I think that they both came out during the same time um, but yeah, I got the blue one which is unfortunate because I wanted the red one because to me the red one is the, the correct one uh, Heavy Metal, yes Hellhammer, uh, absolutely stone cold classic black metal album came out in 1984, I want to say yes, it was 1984 and I was made aware of this album when I was a metalhead and I would buy death metal albums and every other band would have one of his members, one of their members wearing a t-shirt with this album as, you know, a t-shirt um, on their t-shirt basically so yeah, I had to check it out, so I bought it when I was, you know, back in the day basically a reissue obviously, not the original one and I didn't like it because it was it was black metal, it wasn't death metal, so it wasn't polished and produced, it was like Venom mostly. The sound is like early Venom. And I wanted polished sound, a poli very polished, pol polished sound, which benefits, you know, thrash metal and death metal. Uh, but this didn't have one, so I didn't enjoy it that much, so I sold it. But now that I'm older and wiser, I can appreciate it. Um, this is the band that morphed into um, Celtic Frost. I'm not that big of a fan of Celtic Frost, but I do like this one. Uh, more heavy metal, Skeleton Witch, Beyond the Permafrost, Death Metal, Polished. Who? Oh, I cannot speak. Polish, polished sound. Uh, very good production. Just killer riffs. Fantastic. Just, yeah, it's an old-fashioned death metal album, which means it's. Uh, harsher, if you like, uh, version of thrash metal, basically, so, yeah, really good stuff. These guys have a new album out, Paul Bearer, Sorry an Extinction, Extinction. Uh, this came out in 2012, Aussie influenced um, uh, vocals, which uh, I do hear, 
I, in this case, I do hear that. It's not like the Golden Void where everybody says that it's Black Sabbath, but I don't hear that. I do hear that here. Um, doomy, sort of long, long tracks, very epic, very, very good. I checked out the latest one as well. Uh, I could stream that, and it's really good. Very good albums. Very good stuff. It's 15 minutes. I don't want to do any more because this is a now streaming video. So you know, I, I I have other things as well, but I don't want to you know to stretch it out. Excuse me, stretch it out too much. Um, so yeah, I will be probably doing another uh, new finds uh, next week. Um, yeah, and I will be seeing you around.